with all these real estate deals, whenever you're selling a piece of property, do you put all the money into a new piece of property? Because if you don't, you end up paying massive taxes on it. Yeah, yeah. I never pay taxes. If, if, if there's a way not to pay, I never pay. Okay, so you're constantly basically flipping your money into other real estate. Yeah, exactly. So I never have the money, right? I can never actually touch the money. You know, in, in a real estate transaction, as you know, you, if you touch any of the money, then it's going to get taxed. So what I would do is I would just trade into another deal. And uh, I'm not avoiding the IRS. I'm just deferring till the future, some future, like who knows when that is, uh, so, so that I can get my money to work. And this is where, where I really started learning about money because they don't teach you this in college. Five years of college, they didn't teach me. Look, keep growing the nut, like the, 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 the value of the property, the, the, the equity in the property, it went from 350 grand, 3 million, to 9 million, to 12 million. I can't spend any of it. This is, what, this is what so many of your listeners need to understand is that like, I'm not buying Gucci belts. I'm not buying, I didn't have a, a, a European car until I was 45 years old. I was worth millions of dollars based on the real estate, but I, I didn't have any nice stuff. Nobody knew my life had changed. But as this, this, this equity is growing, it's paying me every month in passive income. So let's say it was 10% or 8%, whatever the number, is it goes from 350 to 3 million to $12 million. I can actually receive less money every month and my income's coming going up. This is money for the first time in my life. I was starting to earn more money from my passive investments than I was for my earned income. And I never took, I never took uh, any attention off of my earned income. I was still pounding on my businesses. I had two little businesses and the real estate. And then the other two businesses, I just kept pushing on. And as I would accumulate more cash, we'd go buy more deals. Okay. So then 2007 hits. And, you know, and I remember leading up to 2007, they were giving loans to anybody and everybody. It didn't matter. You could work at a grocery store and you could get approved for a half million dollar house. How many loans do you write each month? Uh, about 60. Yeah. What was it four years ago? 10, maybe 15. Damn, I was a bartender. Now I own a boat. Like they had option arm loans where you start out and your mortgage payment is nothing. And they say, well, don't worry about it. It'll just refinance when the house goes up and you'll it'll still stay low forever. And then... Everything unraveled in 2007. Yeah. How did that hit your business? You so, had so, look, a look. lot of property. The, the, the whole environment was insane, right? Even, even before the bus, a guy like me, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do this business, very practical, very conservative investments. I'm putting a lot of money down to buy a deal. So if a deal is uh, $8 million, I'm putting $2.4 million down. I got my buddies... My buddies are buying an $8 million deal, taking 800 grand out. And I'm like, what are you guys doing, man? This is insane. Well, you should be doing it too. I said, dude, th th there's nothing about this that makes sense except that it's too easy. And so, you know, everybody was doing this, okay? Now, this reminded me of the drug days, my drug days, when I couldn't say no to something. And to me, it's like you have to say no. If you want to create wealth for yourself, there's things you have to say no to. I didn't lose one piece of property in 2007, 8, 9, 10. I never lost anything. Every one of my friends that did this nonsense lost everything they had. I had a bank. I owed $50 million to a bank. Uh, the bank went under, okay, because they, did the, they participated in the foolishness. Now, here's the problem with that. Uh, when you're in a bar and the place goes insane, it doesn't matter whether you're carrying a gun or drinking or doing foolish stuff or not. If you're, if you're in the, the mass hysteria of insanity, you're going to get beat up. And I was, in, I was in all this, right? So first thing that happens is the bank collapses. New bank comes in and says, we need our money. I'm like, the money's not due for a couple years. Yeah, no, no, no. You violated this agreement and that agreement. I'm like, what? Technical default. I never even heard that term. It's a technical default on the loan <clears throat> uh, because your net worth changed. I'm like, what? He's like, the value of the properties are down. I'm like, dude, the value of the entire universe went down. So they're just trying to, they're trying to squeeze people that had money. 
because the people that didn't have money were folding so fast. The banks couldn't keep up with it. I owe $50 million to the banks. You can't sell anything. My other two businesses have been like literally cut in half, maybe cut in two, by two thirds. I was living in Los Angeles, about to have a baby, my first baby, just got married, told my wife, I said, we can't spend one penny on anything. And I have no idea how long this is gonna last. So it didn't, financially, it just terrified me, right? Cause, cause I realized how much it takes to really be protected in society today. Cause you don't know these things are gonna happen.